Good evening. My name is Dr. Maria Scott. Welcome to Chesapeake Eye Care and Laser Center's webinar on cataracts. I want to thank all of you for taking the time to participate in this virtual seminar. COVID-19 has made us rethink how we do things, and our seminars are no exception. For your safety, we decided that a virtual webinar would be more prudent. We want this to be an interactive dialogue, and we encourage all of you to submit your questions, and we will be happy to answer them at the end of the short presentation. First, I would like to introduce our wonderful doctors and services. From left to right, Drs. Tamara Fackler, Brian Gonzalez, Kelly Schoner, Olivia Dreisky, Maria Scott, Erin Benjamin, Heather Nesty, Oren Zwick, Priska Diala, Huareb Stravastava, and Rebecca Dean. Our doctors are well trained, have great hands, and are top in their fields. I am joined tonight in this seminar with Drs. Heather Nesty, Huareb Stravastava, and Olivia Dreisky. All of us do cataract diagnosis and treatment. Drs. Nesty and Dr. Srivastava also do glaucoma diagnosis and treatment. Dr. Dreisky and I do refractive surgery, including LASIK and PRK. Dr. Orion Zwick is our oculoplastic surgeon, and he also performs cosmetic services, including Botox and fillers. Drs. Tamara Fackler and Priska Diallo are our medical retina specialists and they specialize in macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, and other retinal diseases and treatments. Dr. Olivia Dreisky is also a cornea specialist and specializes in diagnosis and treatment of corneal diseases, and she and Dr. Srivastava treat dry eye. Routine eye exams, contact lenses are performed by Drs. Kelly Schoner, Brian Gonzalez, and Rebecca Dean who also share in the post-operative care of cataract and LASIK surgery. Many people think I'm a workaholic, but I love to work hard and play hard. My husband and I moved to Annapolis and married 28 years ago, and I opened up practice soon after that. We have two wonderful children. Matt is a broker for Schwab, and Riley is a second-year medical student at Jefferson in Philadelphia. We love to travel, water ski, snow ski, sail, cook, and entertain friends and family. Hi, my name is Dr. Heather Nesty. I joined Chesapeake Eye Care over 15 years ago. I completed my training in Philadelphia and moved to the wonderful town of Annapolis. I'm very busy outside my work with my three active children and my husband. We enjoy mostly outdoor activities um, such as tennis, skiing, hiking, and enjoy traveling together. Hi, my name is Dr. Gore Srivastava. Many people sometimes wonder where I'm originally from, as my name and appearance puts me in a vast array of regions, such as Eastern European, Latin American, Middle Eastern, and so on. But actually, my parents are originally from India, and I'm a first-generation American born here in Maryland. That is why I am excited to be back in the DMV area and very excited to be part of such an innovative and highly technologically advanced practice here at Chesapeake Eye Care and Laser Center in Annapolis. I think of my patients as my own family and work diligently to help improve their visual potential just like my fellow colleagues. When I'm not working hard and have spare time, I enjoy doing outdoor activities like playing sports such as basketball, golf, football, watching movies, traveling to various countries, and most importantly, spending quality time with my family. Hi, my name is Olivia Dreisky. I'm originally from Stockholm, Sweden, but I grew up in Buffalo, New York. I moved to DC six years ago, where I completed my residency at Georgetown University and my cornea fellowship at Johns Hopkins. I'm new to the Chesapeake Eye Care family, but I already feel like this is my forever home. I specialize in cataract, cornea, and refractive surgery. I'm so grateful to be part of such a great team where we offer state-of-the-art diagnostic and therapeutic modalities for patient management. 
When I'm not at work, I love staying active, traveling, and spending time with my family and friends. My husband, Joe, works in DC, and fortunately, we live down the street from some of our family, including our new nephew, Flynn. I hope you enjoy the rest of our presentation this evening. People at the seminar might be here for a variety of reasons, but the most common reason for decreased vision after the age of 60 is cataracts. So you have cataracts. Let's talk some more about this. The goals for tonight. First and foremost, we are here to answer your questions. We'll touch on what is a cataract, how we treat cataracts, what is the pre-op and post-op regimen, and what you should expect before, during, and after your treatment. We all strive to get back that great vision we had early in our lives. And hopefully with today's seminar, we'll be able to touch on some points that will prepare you for that journey. Let's start with some basics. For instance, what exactly is a cataract and how does this lead to decreased vision? This is a cross-section of a normal anatomical eye. From this picture, you can see there is a natural lens located in the eye and its purpose is to help focus all the light rays from the world onto a center point in the back of our eye, also known as the retina, so that we can clearly view the world. As we mature, that lens is exposed to UV light from the sun, and over time, the lens becomes cloudy. I like to give an analogy of an egg. If you think of the white part of an egg, or as we say the egg white, it is clear when you first place it in a hot pan. If you think of the UV light from the sun as a hot pan, the heat slowly from the hot pan causes the natural protein, like we have in our lens, to aggregate and thus thicken up and get cloudy. Once the lens is cloudy, it is called a cataract, and this keeps the light from focusing clearly on the retina, which hinders us from viewing the world as clearly as we once did. So, if you have a cataract, there is an array of symptoms that many people can describe it as. But most commonly, when an individual has cataracts, they may note that bright colors are more dimmer or dull than they used to be, may note halos around lights, difficulty driving at night, need more light to read, blurred vision or even double vision, frequent changing of glass prescriptions that don't seem to fully help. To the right, you can see in an image of a person who would see if they had a cataract versus a person with their cataract removed or a clear lens. Now let's talk about who develops cataract. The simple answer is that almost everyone will develop cataracts as one matures. Typically, people in their 60s and most people over the age 70 have some degree or form of cataract. And cataract affects 20.5 million Americans over the age of 40. We are all not the same, and there is many factors that will impact how quickly or slowly our cataract will develop. Some factors include family history, smoking status. If you smoked or are a current smoker, you are at a higher risk of developing cataracts quicker than if you did not smoke. Amount of UV light exposure over time, such as living in more sunny environments versus not. History of trauma to the eye, excess alcohol use, amongst others. Don't stress about your eyesight failing you as you get older. It's nature's way of protecting you from the shock as you walk past that mirror. But all jokes aside, we do have options to help treat your cataracts. And that's what we'll talk about next. So what are some treatment options for cataracts? For mild symptoms, new glasses, appropriate light, and increased magnification may be helpful. For moderate to severe symptoms, you'll likely require cataract removal with an intraocular lens implant. What do you do if you suspect you have cataracts? You can call the office and schedule an eye examination. At your appointment, plan on spending three hours in the office. 
We will obtain an extensive history, dilate your eyes as part of the complete exam, take measurements, and there will be time for counseling. Using artificial tears prior to your appointment may allow us to obtain more accurate measurements. We will ask you questions about your medical history, such as have you had previous eye surgeries such as LASIK, PRK, retina surgeries or injections? Do you take certain medications? Medications for your eyes such as glaucoma medications, medications for the prostate such as Flomax, or even medications for the heart such as amiodarone. Do you have certain eye problems or have you ever been told that you have certain eye problems in the past such as dry eye, needing prisms in the glasses, corneal or retinal problems? Do you have back or breathing problems? And have you ever had previous trauma, especially trauma to the eyes? We will also want to know about your lifestyle. What do you do for a living? Are you retired? What do you enjoy doing? Do you wear glasses? And if so, do you wear those glasses all the time or only for certain activities? Are you bothered by your glasses fogging when you're wearing your mask? All of these questions will help us determine the best surgical options for you. As previously mentioned, your eyes will be dilated with drops at your visit. This will allow us to take a look at the front of the eyes, at the cataracts, and at the retina, nerve, and blood vessels in the back of your eyes. We will also perform several tests at your visit. This will allow us to assess the size of your eye, the shape of your cornea to look for astigmatism, and it will allow us to analyze the health of your retina. All of these are very important factors in determining what the best surgical options are for you. Here is a nice slide which shows some images that we use to interpret your results. The image on the top right is a picture of a healthy retina, but the image on the top left shows a retina that has a macular pucker, which may be affecting this person's vision. The bottom two pictures show images that we use to assess the health of the nerve in the back of the eye. At the end of your visit, there will be time for counseling. We'll answer questions such as, do you have a cataract? Are you nearsighted, farsighted, and do you have astigmatism? Does the cataract impair your daily activities? We'll also discuss what you would like to achieve from surgery. We'll want to know is being less dependent on glasses important to you? And we'll let you know what we think is realistic to achieve from surgery. Our goal with cataract surgery is to not only improve your functional vision, but possibly give you the opportunity to minimize your dependence on glasses. As we age, our natural lens becomes more rigid. And that is why we have more difficulty reading because our lens can no longer accommodate to focus on two different focal points. Our new intraocular lens implant or IOL is also rigid and it's made of an inert acrylic material. Myopia, which means nearsightedness, is a common disorder that allows you to see up close better than you can see in a distance. After cataract surgery with a single focus lens, you can choose whether you would like to remain nearsighted and wear glasses for distance, or you can choose to have distance vision, but you will lose the close-up vision that you have before your cataract surgery and will need reading glasses. If you are hyperopic or have no distance prescription, 
Your only option would be to correct for distance and wear reading glasses. If we made your eyes nearsighted after surgery, you would be so unhappy with your distance vision because you're not used to distance being blurred. If you are a contact lens wearer and enjoyed wearing monovision contact lenses, you may also have the opportunity of doing monovision with your cataract surgery implants. If you do that, we do request that you wear glasses 30 minutes a day to keep the fusion of your eyes and your eyes work together during that time. If you have astigmatism, which means your eye is shaped a little like a football instead of a basketball, and if you don't get it corrected with surgery, you will still need to wear glasses at all distances, even if you decide you want distance vision because the astigmatism blurs your vision at all distances. So what is astigmatism? It is an imperfection in the curvature of the eye's cornea or the lens. There are three places that you can have astigmatism, the front of the cornea, the back of the cornea, and on the lens itself. All that adds up to what your glasses prescription would be. When you have astigmatism, your vision is blurry at all distances. There are available astigmatism correcting lenses for single vision. With one of these intraocular lens implants, you can have your nearsightedness or farsightedness corrected and your astigmatism at the same time. So if you look at the picture on the left of the sailboat, this is someone who has cataracts and astigmatism. And as you can see, the vision is clouded and blurred. If we remove the cataract and replace the lens with a traditional lens implant, you will get rid of the cloudiness, but still have the blur and the distortion from the astigmatism, as you see in the middle photo. With a toric or astigmatism correcting implant, you can correct your distance or your near vision and sharpen the images so you're less dependent on glasses. Also available are multifocal and depth of focus correcting lenses. These lenses provide a full range of vision with distance, intermediate, and close vision with the least dependence on glasses. This is a picture of my 89-year-old mother. She had one of the first multifocal implants in 2006. And for the last 14 years, she has been glasses-free. She drives to and from Philadelphia like she's going to the grocery store. And when she and I cook our big Italian meals for the family together, she is the one that reads the recipes because her close vision is better than mine. These multifocal and toric lenses are available, but there are additional fees that apply to the upgraded lens options. Almost everyone will experience halos and glare immediately following the surgery, but 95% of patients say it is much improved by six to eight months. 5% of the patients say the halos never resolve, but they're so pleased with their vision that they're still happy with the implant. Less than 1% of the patients will not be able to neuroadapt to this technology and will have persistent halos or poor quality vision. In these patients, we can exchange the lens, but the patient will lose the range of vision that they enjoyed. Also less than 1% of the time, when we're in the surgery, the support may not be good enough to place a multifocal or toric lens. In these patients, we can place a single focus lens, and the extra cost of the lens 
will be refunded to the patient. Now we're gonna spend some time talking about the cataract surgery procedure. Prior to surgery, there are several steps that will need to be taken. Um, you will be receiving drops by mail with instructions on how to use these drops on the day of surgery. In addition, you are required to see your primary care physician for medical clearance. If you have a heart condition, you may be required to see your cardiologist. In addition, we want you free of any infections in your body and we'll instruct you on how to wash around your eye prior to your surgical day. Cataract surgery is one of the safest and most successful procedures formed in the United States. It is performed on an outpatient basis and we use mild anesthesia, most commonly numbing drops. It is performed in our outpatient surgical center and our patients return to their daily activities quickly. There are some minimal restrictions that we ask after cataract surgery, including no eye rubbing, avoiding dirty environments, hot tubs swimming, and keeping to light exercise only. There are currently two different types of surgery to help remove cataracts. One is called manual surgery and the other is called laser assisted surgery. In manual surgery, we use instruments called blades to make the tiny incisions into the eye. We then use a special device to make a tear in the anterior capsule, which allows us to gain access to the lens. After we have that small opening created by forceps, the lens is broken into small micro-fragmented pieces by an ultrasound. This lens inserted at the time of manual surgery is chosen using only our preoperative calculations and the intraocular lens is inserted. No astigmatism correction is performed during manual cataract surgery. The second type of cataract surgery is called laser-assisted surgery. In laser-assisted surgery, we actually use two lasers. The first laser is called the LensX femtosecond laser. This laser provides the energy to create the incisions for our cataract surgeries, as well as softening and fragmenting the lens into microscopic particles. In addition, during laser-assisted cataract surgery, once your complete cataract has been removed, we have an oral laser. This laser allows us to perform intraocular measurements to help us be the most accurate in predicting the proper lens implant and placement. This short movie demonstration we you will see shows and highlights the difference between manual cataract surgery and femtosecond assisted laser cataract surgery. Once your cataract has been removed completely after femtosecond laser, a second laser called the aura is performed. The aura is a refraction intraoperatively after your cataract is removed. This laser is vital in allowing us to choose the correct power of the implant. In addition, it allows us to precisely correct the astigmatism and line up the orientation with intraocular measurements as well as using all the accurate preoperative measurements that were taken prior to surgery. By using the aura, we are increasing your chances of getting the desired result with the minimal amount of residual refractive error. Cataract surgery is a refractive surgery. Many of you have heard of LASIK. LASIK is a refractive surgery that folks without cataracts have when they are younger to help eliminate their need for glasses or contact lenses. LASIK has excellent results where greater than 95% of patients are within a target range, allowing them to do most activities and be independent of glasses. Currently, cataract patients are achieving that target about 76% of the time nationally. At Chesapeake Eye Care, we are working hard with the femtosecond laser and aura to achieve LASIK-like results for our cataract patients. Looking at our results, we are able to achieve that 95% target with our multifocal patients, meaning that 100% of those patients can drive without glasses. In addition, our monofocal patients are also achieving this at 94% with using aura and femtosecond laser technology. Without the use of femtosecond and laser, or a technology, 
we still are achieving results of 86% into that target range, still well above the national average. Many of you may have heard that cataracts can come back. This is actually not true. Once the cataract has been removed from the eye and your intraocular lens has been placed, the cataract cannot regenerate. The capsule or support holding your new intraocular lens implant in place, however, can become cloudy. And this is often what is termed a second cataract. Second cataracts are common. They can be treated easily. This requires a return to the office for evaluation. If indeed that membrane or capsule has become cloudy, a simple laser procedure can be used to clear that membrane and make the vision sharp again. Once the secondary cataract or capsular opacity has been cleared, it does not return. Cataract surgery is an opportunity for patients with mild to moderate glaucoma to have small stents placed into the eye to help lower the eye pressure. These stents are often the smallest devices that can be placed in the human body. They allow us to increase the outflow of fluid from inside the eye to the outside and hence lower intraocular pressure. These implants are placed after the cataract has been removed and these stents are compatible with MRI testing which may be required in the future. This slide illustrates just how tiny these devices are. This is another example of a glaucoma stent that can be placed at the time of cataract surgery. This stent is a little bit longer than the ones on the previous slide. The stent allows for two different ways for the intraocular pressure to lower. First, there's a small opening that allows fluid to get into the drain quicker. Secondly, the length of the stent helps to expand and keep the canal or the drain of the eye open. and This allows for easier access for the fluid to exit the eye and helps to lower the intraocular pressure. There are times where it is not possible to place a stent into a patient's drainage system. In that case, there are alternative treatments that we can perform at the time of cataract surgery, addressing the outflow and drain of the eye. These are called goniotomy and canaloplasty. Lastly, there is one alternative microscopic invasive glaucoma surgery, which can also be used at the time of your cataract removal. This is called cytophotocoagulation. It is a small pulsed laser that allows us to shrink the area that produces fluid in the eye. Production of less fluid helps to lower your intraocular pressure. Cataract surgery is more than replacing your lens. It can change your refractive needs. Using the latest technology lenses, we have the ability to provide an opportunity to decrease your dependence on glasses. I would like to thank you for sharing your evening with us during our cataract seminar. On behalf of the entire staff and physicians at Chesapeake Eye Care, I would like to extend a sincere thank you for allowing us to share in your care over the past 25 years.